Hey guys, it's Lindsay Palos and I'm on the Hollywood Raw podcast. Today we're talking about Dan Bilzerian, Playboy Mansion, celebrities in my DMs, and much, much more. What's up, Hollywood Raw fam? Welcome to our YouTube page. Make sure you tap that little bell, subscribe to our channel, like, comment, do all the things down below. Dax, tell us about our guest today. Yeah, our guest today is a model, an actress, a podcaster, and you can see her always looking incredible on Instagram. Lindsay Palis, welcome. Lindsay, welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. Good to have you. Looking very nice tonight, uh, nice today. You look good. I like the outfit, like the shirt. If you're listening to it on the, on the podcast, she's wearing a very cool shirt. Uh, where are you right now? I am in my house in California, um, Hollywood, I guess you could say. Okay. You like Hollywood? I do. I do. I mean, there's there's good parts and bad parts like everywhere, I think. But LA is a magical place for sure. I was oh. going to say, I feel like there was a little bit of a hesitation there when he asked. So is there somewhere else you would rather be? Oh, my God. No, hell no. No, I love living here. I think my hesitation <laughs> was um, actually I'm always worried about spilling my neighborhood because I'm so worried about okay. <laughs> You know, someone find me. So I'm like, where should I say I live? But I live in Los Angeles. That is the truth. Have you had issues with like stalkers and stuff? I mean, yeah, of course. And creepy, yeah, some creepy emails. I mean, I've got a guy who's emailed me every day for six years, probably. Really? And, uh, yeah, it just makes you nervous because you never know. You never know how that's going to end up. And what does he say? Just hi, hello, just thinking about you? Like, what does someone say when they email you every single day for six years? Um, the truth is when people email you crazy shit, they all think the government is out to get them. So that's like a recurring theme. And then, uh, they just babble about sex, about life, about being wronged. You're kind of just like a personal therapy that you like never signed up for. Yeah. Isn't it weird though? Cause you want to be a nice person. You're very like appreciative that you have a fan or someone who's like interested in you. But yet again, it's like, where does the line go? Like, how does it, how do you not come off as a how do you come off as not a dick? Well, the best thing to do if someone is actually scary is to just not engage at all. Because then if something did escalate, you have a proof that like you never contacted them back. Because the minute you say something back, it almost like refreshes um, as far as creating a criminal case goes. So the best thing to do is not write back if you actually think someone's threatening. I had I had a crazy lady who would call me every day for like a year, but she would switch numbers. So I didn't know it was her calling through and she would switch numbers. And again, it was like you said, crazy conspiracy stuff or her telling me I was the only person that could help her out because her family was out to kill her, like insane stuff. And My God. I would answer the phone thinking it wasn't her because I had blocked <laughs> so many numbers and then it was always her and i'm like no and then she would catch me and then it it perpetuated the calls because i would answer yeah god that's consistent and that's costly that's she invested her money into you which is and i think she was doing pay phones too at the time holy wow. shit <laughs> I, I don't know what it is about the government that really gets people going or this yeah. like you know but it's okay as long as we're safe exactly. whatever exactly so yeah. you were one of you were one of the like original original IG models, right? Like we, I think you can claim that title, correct? A hundred percent, yes. Whenever um, there was a point where five thousand Instagram followers were the top one percent, so to be in the top, and it might have been like the point zero one percent. I'm not exactly sure, but if you had five thousand followers, that was the percentage. And um, oh yeah, I definitely walked back then. So, so then, how did you did you? Because I, I feel like everyone always complains about monetization on IG and not being able to utilize. How did you originally go, okay, let me monetize what I have going. I have a following and I want to make sure that I'm making money. How did you do that? Oh my gosh. I did it very slowly and very stupidly. I think like anyone in a new business venture. Um, and I was really broke for at least two or three years. I quit my bartending job, the first paid post I had, which was for a health and wellness company, and it was $300. And I thought, if I made $300 doing a, a post, it took me about 20 minutes, then maybe I should quit my bartending job that takes me about seven hours to make the same thing. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And then I, I quit and I called them back five minutes later and I was like, can I please keep my job? I don't know what I'm thinking. I must be insane. And they were like, why don't you think it over? And um, that was the last job that I ever had to clock into. But the last, the first three years were very tough. I took shitty jobs, shitty modeling jobs in LA. I just took kind of whatever I could get, but I learned from seeing other people do things. So I learned that people could make a swimsuit calendar and I asked around and I ended up um, producing that myself every year. So I hired a photographer and yeah, I did everything from the shipping to the, to putting it together. It's been a lot of work, but I think I've just learned to pay attention and hustle. Yeah, you're your own boss, essentially, especially it sounds like we do the calendar, which I think is kind of cool. Like you don't you know, you could do it yourself. You have your brand, you know, you start to develop your brand on Instagram and then you start to get this fan base. Who are your fans? Would you say is it majority <laughs> men? If I went to your Instagram demographics, like what is it from guy to girl? Would you about? Oh, my gosh. At least 90, 10. And that's being generous. It's a ton of guys. <laughs> Um, when I dated Dan Bilzerian, he had a huge male following. So I got all of his male followers, which are very much, um, people who are into guns and girls, which I don't, you know, I told that's fine, but no, I have a lot of guy followers, but you know, I've kind of leaned into that. I think a lot of brands get picky when a girl has a ton of guy followers and they kind of leverage that to say, you know, oh, we don't want to work with you because your following is all male. But I just kind of own it and lean into it. And I enjoy having a super male following. It's kind of fun. Sure. I'm glad yeah. you brought up Dan because I've always wondered, is his life as crazy <laughs> and over the top as he portrays on Instagram? Because that's his thing to have this crazy over top. But I can't tell. It's like, are all the girls actually hanging out in the bathtub with you? Or were you like, okay, everyone in the picture, let's take a shot. And then like everyone disbands. Um, absolutely. It's all real, which is really? crazy. A hundred percent. And is it, uh, is it hard to date someone like that though? It was, but I, tw I was 23 when we met and this was the first, one of the first people I met in LA period. So um, with Dan came a ton of adventure. I met some of my now lifelong friends through Dan and Dan made it a purpose to make me internet famous. So hanging out with Dan came with a lot of perks, but it was a hundred percent real. His lifestyle was real. It was so um, interesting to me that the first time we met, I actually came home and I wrote the entire story down. Like, you know, I have 10 pages of when I met Dan Blazerian because it was the wildest night and just situation and but no that's a hundred percent his life which is fascinating okay take us through the wild night i want to <laughs> <Yeah>. hear <laughs> well basically um i got invited to the playboy mansion for a halloween party and i moved here i'd maybe been here like 10 days i didn't even have a sofa yet and i was like you know i gotta go why like i gotta go someone's sure. gonna get me in there i gotta go and so i bought a pitchfork and devil horns and i wore underwear and I met up with these strangers at the Roosevelt and they took me to the Playboy Mansion. And um, immediately a security guard came up to me and he's like, hey, do you want to meet Dan Bilzerian? And I was like, oh, yeah, like I know who this guy was. And um, so they brought me over there and he literally was just his first words were actually, I like the way you jiggle. And then I, that pickup line actually works. I like the way you jiggle. It was the first. It was what it was the first thing he said, and then I responded with, "This is what the real thing looks like." Like just <laughs> so cheesy, but um, we hung out all night. I remember um, when we went back to his place. He had it was the first time I'd ever been in. Like I think it was a Rolls Royce, and there was like a zebra rug on the floor, like something outrageous. And I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And when we got back to the house. There, I remember specifically the kitchen was filled with like fruit and snacks and trays. And it was the first time I'd ever seen like a cornucopia of food. Like I'd been to Thanksgiving dinner, but I'd never seen such a display on a random Halloween night at someone's home. It was shocking. It was just, but he, the whole thing was real. He is the real deal. Was there other women there? There from that night, I don't remember there being another woman there, but there was a bra there. Like there okay. was a bra hanging on his door handle that I remembered specifically. So, so when you were dating sure him, there were other women there, to be honest with you. Looking back, absolutely there were. So when you were dating him, was it exclusive? Was he seeing other people? Was it sort of like menage or what was going on? It was a little open. No, it was definitely open. Dan did whatever he wanted. And he was the good thing about Dan is he's a really honest guy. 
So he doesn't expect monogamy from you if he's not going to give it to you. So he was always like, you know, keep your options open, do whatever you want. And it worked out. I think a lot of a lot of guys think that, you know, cheating is the way, but not at all. Like if you're honest, that's why he has so many women that like him and kind of speak nicely about him because he wasn't deceiving or manipulative and he wasn't selfish. So, no, he had a ton of um, extracurricular activities. And honestly, at 23, I wasn't looking for anything serious either. So it was just it worked. Were you attracted to him or was it the lifestyle? You know, because uh, I could see someone I've met him. And when I met him, I met him once and uh, he wasn't a big guy. Like he's strong. He's in shape. but He's not a tall kind of good guy. He's got that beard. Like it's just like, oh, it's sort of, you know, he's a celebrity. You know, I was just so, I didn't know what well, I was going to expect. But are you, were you attracted to him or, or were you attracted to the lifestyle? Um, I guess based on my own dating history, I mean, that's kind of hard to say because he is his lifestyle. That is who Dan is. So he, he would be a completely different guy if that wasn't his story. But I can tell you I have dated uh, completely broke people since and before. And I've also <laughs> dated men shorter and much taller after. I'm actually notorious for not having a type. When my friends tell me I don't have a type. But what I do like is a leader and someone who's kind of the center of their friend group. And Dan certainly fits that bill. So I don't know. It, I, and I, look, having having fun toys, that's cool. Yeah. But it definitely was not, um, you know, I, so, I don't know. With your brand, does it hurt your brand when you are dating someone? I've always wondered that because, <laughs> you, you know, I, I would think if you have a 90% male audience, they don't necessarily want to see you with a guy. But for your own sanity, I would assume being in a relationship is a good thing. So I'm just curious, does that hurt your brand? I would think it does. Um, yeah, I've been very conscious about posting partners. I prefer to post a partner if he's in the same world, like if he is a public figure, or maybe that's something that would benefit him and I at the same time. But um, yeah, it definitely is something to consider. But it's also something that, you know, if I were in love and committed, it would be a no question and people could deal with it and I wouldn't care. So, but yeah, you're exactly right. It is. You know, you have to really think about sharing someone on Instagram before you do it. It's just like, who said it, Meg the Stallion? If there's no ring on my finger, you're not going on my gram. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's true because they just kind of come and go. And then, you know, <laughs> if people get invested in relationships with celebrities, you know, well, so I would I would say that, like you said, a, another celebrity out there, people enjoy that common dating between celebrities and they can get invested into that relationship and it's someone you don't know it's like you're living vicariously through these other people that are dating you know i don't know it's absolutely and then you feel you need to know why they broke up because you saw their relationship for like i actually totally understand breakup announcements because you let them invest in your love and so you know concluding that with your audience makes sense so i fully support people doing breakup announcements because it's like because if not, they're going to be like, oh, did you see your boyfriend with this girl? Yeah. So you kind of need to announce to the world that you broke up if you'd announce to them that you're together, in my Very opinion. True. Have you ever dated someone and they made you sign an NDA? Um, I know I signed an NDA. Am I allowed to say I signed an NDA if I signed an NDA? Yeah, you can say you signed it. Is it you know, so you, you just. Um, no, only, you know, Dan had NDAs. He so, did? Yes. And what, why would he have an NDA? Like but when you I go believe, to his house, you have to sign it? or Yeah, I believe he had NDAs for everyone. It wasn't a dating thing. And I think it was just a party thing and, um, you know, just protecting himself legally. And which I, I understand if someone comes into your home, I think it can be, especially with cell phones nowadays. Sometimes NDAs are abusive and they're too much, but sometimes they make total sense. But that's the only NDA I remember. In so life. Dan was the only guy who made you sign NDA because I guess it's to say like cons I'm here consensually at your house. Mm. Maybe I don't even know what it said, but I think it's just like you don't want them to, you know, take a picture of, you know, the things in your bathroom or something that could be off putting. I think humans have flaws and you're just protecting yourself from sharing things that are personal and could affect your brand. But um, I'm actually I mean, I've had pretty regular relationships the last few years. I'm not just like banging famous dudes it's not really my thing so fuck no i'm not signing ndas for a bunch of people like <laughs> really not my style but they can sign ndas to enter my life at this point that would make total sense <laughs> now where, where do you meet these guys like are, are they sliding to your dms like how does Lindsay payless meet a dude 
Um, my last boyfriend I was set up with on a television show. So that was kind of um, Just prepared. a Bobby? Yeah. Okay. So that so was, it was a real uh, relationship. Yeah. That that um was two years. A lot of people so don't. You didn't know each other. You guys, like, they kind of, MTV kind of put you together or how'd that go down? Yeah, they put us together. They put us together. MTV is asking local talent to do cameos and if they'd be interested. And because I actually live and work in Hollywood, it made sense. And uh, he had DM'd me a few years before. So when they asked about him, I was like, oh, yeah, he slid in my DMs like two years before. So that was about four years ago. I remember that episode. So you guys came on and that was the first time you really met was that show, that episode? Yeah, we had actually filmed one before. I don't think it aired. So we had okay. met once before. So Thanksgiving was the second time. Gotcha. And then yeah. after that, you're like exchange numbers like, hey, let's hang out again. And that's how you guys started dating. Yeah, pretty much. After we filmed, we went to the Chateau and then we went out and got a little buzz and then we started making out. And then, you know, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah. How, how filled are your DMs with just guys hitting on you guys wanting to catch your attention whatever it is they're pretty filled i think and um it's super flattering and unfortunately i don't see all of them because i'm actually busy so i miss i miss most shots fired like i miss all of them and that sucks but yeah they're they're pretty um frequent and it's really strange i don't know what makes me go with someone and not another person i don't really know does a you, blue check mark help get your attention in your DMs? It does, unfortunately. It, it's not a deal breaker, and not every partner I've had has one. But um, I think just, I think just unconsciously, when you see something that sticks out, it doesn't just say, "Hey, um, I'm rich and famous." It says, "Hey, I might be in a similar industry," which is probably an attractive idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a deal breaker. What if they're only verified on MySpace? Is that okay? <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Why not? All right. Cool. I just asking. So, but if I went through your, is your phone near you right now? Yes. How many unanswered DMs do you have? Oh my god! They don't see a number. They don't give you a number. You have so many. Yeah, because you have so no many. It's like, dude. It's like answer. You got it. It says ninety nine plus. Ninety nine plus. plus. Wow. 99 plus. Wow, that's wild. That's so crazy. And, and if you get a blue check mark, obviously you go to the top, right? Like you'd see that first. No, not mine. At least they just kind of flop through. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, Instagram doesn't work like Twitter. Like Twitter has a verified spot, so yeah. Twitter you can really see someone, but on Instagram it doesn't seem to do that. That's so cool. Who was the uh, Who was the one person that ended up in your DMs? Like, man, this is fucking cool. Like this is this is an awesome one, and not even like a dating thing, just like maybe a, even a fan, you know? Absolutely, um, Backstreet Boy members and NSYNC members, because I don't care, you know, what anyone says. That those men were on my wall as a child. I was <laughs> a fan. I had all the albums. So the minute that you know, I got to meet. I actually met AJ at the Playboy Mansion one time, and he came up to me and he was like, Lindsay. I love your dog, Tosh. Like, he's so cute and funny. And I freaked the fuck out. I'm like, a Backstreet Boy knows my dog? Like, iconic. So the, in the you know, the boy band members are truly, they were truly the most like, oh, my God. I, they called my mom. So well, now so that there's no. I was uh, say, now uh, that on that moment, though, was, <laughs> would that be the moment that you feel like I made it that, like, these Famous people from my childhood know not not only know who I am, know my dog's name. It, like, is that the moment you feel like I made it, or was there a different moment that was even cooler than that? You know what's shocking? I still don't think I've made anything. Oh, stop <laughs> it! On my stop on it. my goal list for this year, I actually put big break because I still don't feel like I've actually had like a big break. I've hustled and it's been a slow and steady kind of grind, but I don't think I've had that one like aha moment yet. Really? You don't think, I mean, you know I don't know your, I don't know your financials, but could you just, if you wanted to, could you retire right now? I think so. It would depend what state we we're talking about retiring in and what kind of lifestyle you'd want to live. Okay. It makes sense. But, um, but yeah, I've gotten lucky. It, it's definitely been more than I could have ever dreamed or imagined, but I still don't feel like I've even come close to like the juice yet, you know? Yeah. No, I it's feel good. like. I feel like that's a problem that most people have, though, is that you, you if, if you were 10 years from now and you look back, you'd say, 
damn, I, I was fucking <laughs> crushing it. I did amazing. But like in the moment, no one really sees that they're at the top of the mountain or that they, you know, the amount of stuff that they've achieved at that moment. You make an excellent point. You do make an excellent point. I, I get mean, it. Shit. You're on the Hollywood Raw podcast. This is I mean, come on. You better put this on your LinkedIn right now, okay? <laughs> it's going on my link tree immediately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so what – but when you first came out to L.A., what did you want to do? Was it to become a model and see what you could do with it or just be in the business, be in the entertainment business? Like what was your, what was your end goal? So funny. The truth is when I was a, a student at LSU, I got my history degree there and I was a bartender and I really suppressed what I truly wanted to do. I think a lot of people do that. We have a dream deep down inside that maybe we're meant to do. And we're like, that's too far fetched. Let me try something else. Like, let me, let me be a teacher. Let me be, a, not that that's a bad end goal, but it wasn't my end goal. So I would convince myself, maybe you should try this. Maybe you should try this. Deep down, for sure, I wanted to do what I'm doing now. This is the dream, but I suppressed it. And so when I was done with LSU and I was a bartender, I thought, I can't live and die here. If you're going to bartend, go somewhere else, at least, just to experience life a little bit more. And it was between L.A. or Vegas. And I had done just a couple modeling jobs and um, in L.A. And I went and did a photo shoot in Malibu. And I was literally on the top of a mountain shooting with this photographer. And I just had this overwhelming feeling that I needed to move to LA. And I said, I'm going to move here. And the guy's like, yeah, I hear that all the time. It's gorgeous. And I was here in three weeks later and that was the October. And then about two weeks later, I met Dan at the Playboy Mansion. Is it suck that there's no, nothing like the Playboy Mansion anymore? Like <laughs> what, what is the new Playboy Mansion? Cause the Playboy Mansion, obviously was these sick it's parties. Dan's house. Dan's house guess is Dan's. the new Playboy Mansion. Yeah, it must be Dan's house. It is the closest thing that I can think of is Dan's house. What it does. You... I, I wish it was a museum and people could go and like visitors could go in the grotto. Yeah. Did you? See, <laughs> I know, right? That'd be sick. Did you see? You can the... bottle up the grotto water and like sell it in the gift shop. Oh no! I would not <laughs> want to touch that water. That'd be kind of gnarly. I, that I don't water, know if that's water. That water would get you pregnant. <laughs> hey, it would be iconic. I would I would buy that. I'd be like, ooh, this is my grotto water. I think it's genius. <laughs> they should have me running the shit. I, yeah, I do remember when I walked sure semen. in. Adam, did I tell you I, I went into the grotto once and it was I was just standing in there just admiring it all like this is really? a fucking amazing moment right now. Yeah. I went there for Oh, that's so a, sick. A, I mean after a party. That's so cool. What uh what, did you think it felt smaller than on the on film? I, I do think it was smaller than I like thought it would be. Yeah. Um, but I felt like the house in general was smaller than I thought it would be. Like right. in pictures, it looks so huge. And when you're there, you're like, it's a big house. But I don't know. It just the grandioso of the Playboy Mansion seems so much more massive. I know yeah. that the driveway up there, I don't know if you went from like the downside <laughs> and all the way up or you were on the top side gate. But it is a pretty windy road to get up there, and you see the lawn, and you see like like the zoo area. I don't. It was just cool to be there more than anything. Yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. But it, it, it felt small to me. I was like, oh, it's like, it's like baby what it looked like on TV. And the coolest moment was when Kendrick has. I was there when they were doing like the girl. What, what was it? Girls Next Door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Kendra was out there dancing and just having a good time. That Hell was fun. Yeah. How fun. Cool moment. Who's who's the coolest person to ever hit on you? Coolest is so relative. <laughs> okay, the one that was like, man, this is pretty awesome. Oh, uh, I don't want to look. The, the there's only one guy that I actually have a crush on that, um, and we have met, and we were very flirty. So I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it because it's. Sure. I still have hope that it could happen. Well, Are you, you currently single? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. What was the last date? What was the last first date you went on? Um, the last first date I went on was about three months ago. And what did the guy do with you? Where did, where did, what did he do? I have no idea. We He's went to impress you. No, we went to a normal restaurant on third street. We talked till the bar closed. It was really fun. We dated for three months and then I broke up with him. Why'd you break up with him? He kind of went on a day date with someone else, but didn't, didn't claim it like a day date. I think in LA, a lot of people have friends that they um, that they're flirty with, to be honest with you, and I think it's leaving options open. So I, it just rubbed me the wrong way, and I was like, oh, I'm not into this anymore. Yeah. 
What yeah. does Justin Bobby do? He is a musician. So like, that's what he does. He, so he's, a, <laughs> he's a working musician where he actually gets paid? He is a musician. No, he, he <laughs> I can I can attest he has been paid to play music. Okay. But um he's a musician. So then I gotta think that uh, there's so many musicians in LA, but maybe <laughs> most of his money, I gotta think most of his money would come from like the hills or something, appearances, because I I mean that that's Perhaps. right. Perhaps. Perhaps. Maybe. Perhaps. <laughs> You know what's so, so uh, go ahead Adam. I'm sorry. So I'm in New York, Dax is in California, okay? Mm -hmm. In New York we hear a lot about these Saudi princesses, fly, uh, princes, princes flying girls out and stuff like that. Have yeah. you been approached by any of these Dubai guys or these princes to say hey, fly you out or come to Dubai and do some stuff? I can say years ago, nonstop. It was always in the email. I actually knew people in LA who would, like people you would never suspect, be like, hey, you can go to Dubai right now. I'll give you like $20,000. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Um, it really used to be so nonstop. But a lot of that has stopped, at least in my emails. I think everyone's gotten the picture like, I don't care. <laughs> but no, it is, a, it is a real thing. And it's a real lifestyle for a lot of people, especially in this town. Like Lindsay what is Lohan. It, I feel like, like Lindsay Lohan every other day is over in Dubai just like hanging out with princes. I'm like, what are you doing, yeah, girl? I think she's on her own dime, though. I don't think she's like doing anything shady. I think that she's totally. I don't, I don't, like, and I don't even mean shady. I mean, yeah. I, I think these princes literally just want her. famous girls around them. Like, I don't, I, and um, I'm not saying sex or anything else. I just think that they enjoy having celebrities in their presence, coming to dinner parties, hanging out with them. Um, and so they'll fly people out just to like be around them. You know what? I love that. See, I would do that. Yeah. Sign me up. I'll go to dinner with people for fun. And that's what they're doing. See, you should have answered some of those emails. Shit. No, I think my <laughs> emails are dirty. I think my emails were like shady. Yeah. So but what from the girls that you know who do it, like what's the arrangement? Like, are you supposed to have sex or you go and just like entertain, just have fun or just be pretty at a party? What are you supposed to do? I think, um, I, hmm, I do think that there are people in LA who are full blown, um, romantic partners with people overseas. I do, but I know that other people can get paid to go out and go to nightclubs. That's normal. I actually do that all the time. I get paid to go to nightclubs and stuff, sure, but, yeah, yeah. um, it's just, they're completely different people with completely different situations. Yeah, they're like pet tigers and stuff. It's like, it's, hey, I was gonna say, yeah. it's a whole nother world that people like don't even know about. You're you're on OnlyFans, you know, mm -hmm. like a lot of people hear the word OnlyFans or the title OnlyFans, and their mind immediately just goes to like dirty content, which yes. it's not always that. What you know, <laughs> what do you put out on OnlyFans? Well, I've been a glamour model. I call it glamour modeling for the last six years. So that's very like maxim style playboy style shoots um i'm very much blurring the line of even what you'd call naked it's i'm right on the line so i don't necessarily a lot of people complain that i'm not naked enough but then some people are like oh my god you're butt naked online so i must be right on the cusp of something <laughs> but um yeah i keep it in the glamour modeling realm i shoot my stuff i still you know i produce pretty extravagant and pretty nice shoots. They're styled and they're gorgeous. And, you know, I pretty much play the role of a Playboy director and producer and stylist and the Playmate on top of it. And then I, you know, conversate and do lives and I'm, you know, um, communicating back and forth with people. So it's almost like an interactive magazine in my world. That's how I run it. But everyone's different. There's totally naughty content on other people's shit. And there's also really, really G-rated content on other people's stuff. I think it's just whoever you want. But I, I'm consistent in the type of model and character I've been this whole time. So it's just an extension of that. But it's nice that I can wear whatever the fuck I want. Like, that is nice. Right. But so it's, yeah. but you have like, production value because other people are just doing cell phone photos of themselves you are like hiring a crew and doing makeup team and wardrobe and all that kind of stuff i do but i like to switch it up so i like to do the highly produced bomb shit because i think i think you need to i think you go big or go home in my opinion 
But um, I like to do at home content too. People love both. And I think it's just, if you can do both, but honestly, a lot of people can't. So don't even try. It's too much work. <laughs> you can't even do it anyway. I'm like, no. Uh, um, on OnlyFans, you could tip people. What's the biggest tip you've ever gotten on OnlyFans? I think there's a cap right now. I think after the Bella Thorne thing, but I might be wrong. So I'm not sure if you can tip more than a hundred dollars per time, but you can tip that multiple times. I'm not exactly sure that I've ever really had. I can't think of one standout massive, yeah. but did, did uh, Bella Thorne, like screw this up for a lot of people. I feel like everyone was mad at Bella Thorne for like joining and like not again, just kind of ruining the, the landscape <laughs> for people. Well, I think that's, you know, I totally, um, I don't know all the details, but OnlyFans is not owned or operated by Bella Thorne. I'm sure she's just an independent contractor of the site. So if anyone was upset about the workings of the site, you obviously should be upset with the owner and not the talent, not the independent contractor. It's like, you know, that's just management. But I don't know. I don't know the details. But I like Bella Thorne. I think she's cool. Is it exhausting? To podcast for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I know. Busy girl. Yeah. Is it exhausting to just kind of keep working on content? Like, cause you have to, uh, you know, you're so, you're such an entrepreneur by your own, but then you're such a creative person with the, with the shots you're doing, the photos, this, the sets. Are you, is it exhausting to just kind of create new content all the time? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's exhausting, but it's so fun. Like what is, what's a better job than this? But um, it's absolutely exhausting and it is definitely a draw a job. I think a lot of people think digital media and digital age jobs are taboo or they are not real or um, something like that. But only a moron couldn't recognize that we spend all of our time online. It's our primary form of communication and entertainment. So this is real, almost more real than the physical lives we lead. So it's funny when people don't think it's a real job. It absolutely is. It takes a lot of time and effort but it is fun as shit and you i would be you got to be good at it too like people assume that you can just post anything you want you have to know your audience you have to create the content they want i yeah. mean there's millions and millions of people out there that want to be social media stars and not everyone can do it there's a talent there there is and i think um i think a lot of it comes with authenticity too because i think even lately i've noticed that um because i am single now and I'm, I'm actually trying to remain single at least until next year. I just want to give it a hard, like I won't even go on a date for six months because I think investing in the relationships online that I've built with people I don't know has given me so much more than some of the romantic ones that I invest even more time in. So I don't know. I think just being authentic and connecting will get you a lot further than uh, effort that you put in. Have you ever dated a fan? Everyone I dated has better, they better be my fan. Sure. I mean, yeah. But that, I mean, that isn't weird to have yeah. someone that's a fan and date you? you I expect you to be my fan because I plan on being your biggest fan. So no, yeah. not at all. Okay, I, get it. I get being a fan <laughs> once they've got to know you and that thing. But coming into the relationship and knowing that they were a fan before, I feel like that's a little strange, no? No, I think, well, I think everyone, you know, we live in an age where you Google and we have explore pages. So most people I've dated, I think, knew me or knew of me a little bit before we dated. So in some ways they may have been a fan and I hope that they were a fan because I do not want to date a non-fan. Okay. That would I be mean, horrible. I, I mean, I get it. I get it. Wait, yeah. Lindsay, what do you want? Like, what's your ultimate goal down the road? We talked about earlier, you feeling like you haven't exactly hit your peak in your career or that moment that you know the top blows off what do you want to do that's a great question my deepest darkest happiest desires would be were to be like a beloved media personality so very similar to a jenny mccarthy or even a carmen electra or someone like that because i enjoy it all i really like hosting i really love acting i love modeling and i love simply talking shit online so I, it's really hard for me to kind of, um, you know, go, go up for one. I want it all and I like it all. So I think just being a full, a fully rounded media personality would be ideal. It's funny that you say that. Cause like right now I, I go to your Instagram page, mm -hmm. you have 8.4 million followers. I go to Carmen Electra's page 
and she has 1.3 million followers. So I just, I want to put the perspective out there <laughs> is what you're looking for. You might already be there. <laughs> That's so creepy. No, I don't think so. I'm I don't think saying, so. Not yet. Just saying. No, I need that one. I need that one aha moment. <laughs> and I the positive one. That's why. I, that's why I specifically write beloved media personality because I don't want to be a shitty one. Because there's so many people that are famous for being assholes or like the wrong things. So I'm like, oh, I want to be liked too. If that's and okay. And just go date Dennis Rodman, and then you know what? Yeah. Your Carmen Electra level, right? I there. met Dennis Rodman one time. He's funny. He's, he's an interesting guy. Interesting guy. He's, he's a very guy. Guy. <laughs> dating, but he's a. He's interesting. He's in, he's definitely. I got a crazy Rodman story. I what? can't say it on air, but I got. Why? I, got, I I I can't even do it. I have to tell you off. It's really it's it's it's, it's like it's a it's a wild one. It's it insane. Needs to be on there. Yeah, it's really insane. Uh, so we do a so, yes, we do a speed round on this uh, on okay. this podcast, and we ask you a few quick questions. Uh, I just want to see what the first answer. You know, think about the first thing that comes to your mind, and just kind of go for it. Okay. Basically, don't okay. overthink the question. Don't overthink it. Just kind of have fun with it and go with it. Are you ready, Dex? All right, here we go. Favorite restaurant in LA? Sugar Taco, my restaurant. Oh, nice. What that about the it. most overrated restaurant in LA? Oh, the probably the Salt Bay place, but I've never been there. But I just can't imagine Maybe paying that much money for this. Yeah, like fifteen hundred dollars for a steak wrapped in gold. It's if, so if that is like a one. If some man wanted to date me and he was like, I go to the salt Bay split place and buy steaks, I'd be like, fuck off. We're done. <laughs> Absolutely not. You wasteful human being. Uh, <laughs> no offense uh, to Salt Bay. I admire Salt Bay himself. Oh, I yeah, don't even care the idiots that pay for it. Hey, if you can convince them, take their yeah. money. Favorite night spot, nightlife spot in LA. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I'm not supposed to think about it hard, huh? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, like, okay, house party. House parties in the hills. Not even the club. I'm a big house party girl. Speaking, okay, speaking of house party, who's got the biggest celebrity home you've ever been in? Oh, oh, oh. I actually recently, um, I went to the guy, I went to the person, I believe I went to the person's house who made The Matrix. Oh, seriously? I think like, so. Like director. <laughs> Um, I think so. I don't know. If, if you told me the name, I might know. But a friend of them, I was invited to swim. And I remember it was like a vast uh, house. It was huge. And they had the bench from the Matrix, the concrete bench. That's so cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I sat on that bench. Oh, wait, was it with the wait, Wachowskis? I don't know. Is that his name? No. Well, there, it's the, it was the Wachowski brothers. Now it's Wachowski sisters. I don't think, I don't know. It was some man's house. I know the Matrix was involved and I sat on the bench. So, so interesting. Happens. Oh, I'm so curious. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, most overrated nightlife place in LA? Ooh, only, only I'll say the highlight room just because it's extremely crowded. Okay. That's a, yeah, that's in Hollywood. It's always crowded in there. Can't right. do it. Who's the biggest name in your cell phone? I don't want to tell you because that's the one I have a crush on. And I hope that one day it'll work. Second biggest name in your cell phone. Second yeah, besides, biggest name. Besides John Mayer. Yeah. Who's the second biggest somehow, name? Somehow I do think I have the weekends number somehow. And <laughs> no, I'm not even. Yeah. I have some others, but that's I'll so just funny. say that one. Adam, who was the other person that said that they had the weekends phone number? <laughs> oh, man. Remember who was that? Shit. Um, was it, um, was it uh, Amanda Cerny? I don't even know. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I think I don't it was Amanda. Oh, that one. I think Amanda said that the weekend had hit her up, or they were texting. I can't remember. Anyway. Seems, yeah, but I don't know why I have that. I've never texted him. I don't think. Did he just give you his number? Like, hey, here's my number. If you want to come to, if you're around. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know. Right. Um, who's the nicest star you met in Hollywood? Oh my God. I was at, this is funny. Cause I was thinking about this recently, but I was at a party and Taylor Swift bumped into me and I didn't even notice. Like I, it, I didn't even notice. And she turned around and she goes, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I didn't even know you touched me. And, um, but she was so cute. It was so nice. It was just like a very, I mean, polite person. I mean, it was brief. That is, that's a, Who's party? That's a good one. That's a good um, It was one of the, the, it was a Jimmy Iovine party. Okay. okay. So. There's been a lot of people there at that party, huh? 
It was a, there were a lot of people. That was definitely the most um, exclusive A-list party I've ever been to in my life. When you go to a party like that, are you allowed to bring cell phones in? I think we were. Yeah, I think we were. Okay. It's weird mm -hmm. to go up to someone's like, have your phone out and stuff, right? Or Of course. I mean, to film people without their consent. At any oh, yeah. Well, that kind of thing. Yeah. Easy as fuck. I hate, I hate voyeurism and I, I hate it all together. I hate yeah. it with celebrities and regular non-celebrity people. I think it's so rude. Have you, have you had an awkward run in with, uh, sorry, this is going to be your next question. Have you had a, an awkward run in with a celebrity? Well, I, yes, I tried to refrain from it, but, um, I did, there was, um, an iconic fashion model of the nineties rubbed me the wrong way at a party. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so Cindy Crawford. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think she was a fan of the boobs, but who knows? Oh. You know what? Do you ever get that? Like the, 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 the Victoria's secret models, those type of models maybe look down up the Instagram models. Oh my God. Yeah, of course. I think there's definitely there's definitely a mood and even still some fashion brands and um, online magazines and people, they think that other models aren't real models and especially petite women. You know, I'm just I'm a person who is five three. So I was never uh, model material to agencies or some of these big magazines. So that's always been a reason that I've had to hustle a little bit differently. And, yeah, they're super judgmental about it. They hate it. But you're the thing about you, and I, I, you're all, and I, I don't want to. I'm not trying to be too. You're, you're all natural, correct? My, I've had one major procedure. Okay, I'll say that. But uh, my body, all that's completely real. Okay, and that's the thing is, like, I would think it's someone who's, I, it's hard to look down at someone like you because you're, 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 you're this is your natural body. It's not like you're some plastic kind of person. So it's like it's kind of, I think we should. Be, like that we'd want that in a model someone who like owns their body you know what they're born with i think it's interesting and i think we're in a particular time where um the problem with me specifically is i don't have anything that is soft so like i'm not a mom and i'm um my body type is conventionally attractive my boobs are really big i'm a size zero i have blonde hair like there's nothing about me that screams there's nothing about me that's tame and I do, I know that that is hard for people to follow and appreciate because I think the world, they like women, but they like us a little bit more um, non-threatening and they like us a little more muted. I think people get a little bit more love if they're muted in certain ways. And I am the opposite of muted and I just am down with it. I don't care. Quiet girls don't go down in history. We've, we've heard that one. Yeah. What? Well behaved girls? Yeah, they don't go down yeah. in history. Yeah, um, they don't. I mean, look, I mean, look at Kim. I mean, I really admire someone like Kim Kardashian. She's shorter than me. We were in an elevator together. She's a little smaller than me. Uh, curvy, didn't, doesn't give a fuck. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, back uh, our questions. How many photo libraries do you have in your phone? Like, you know, the little categories? Yeah, what do you title them? This is going to be so embarrassing. I have today's post, so I put whatever I need to post today. And then I have, oh, I have an album with my house because <laughs> I love my house. Um, future OnlyFans content, press materials. Oh, I have one titled Us, and it's me and my ex-boyfriend. Oh, delete that. Get rid of him. <laughs> delete that, I know. And then I have one that's Tosh, which is just all my dog. This is all my dog. <laughs> Who is, by the way, right here? That's Hi, Tosh. Oh, that's so an awesome cute. dog. Isn't he gorgeous? Uh, yeah, he's a good dog. You're the perfect guy. We love you. <laughs> great. Uh, the best looking celebrity you've seen in person? Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. That's he hasn't hit need... on you yet? Huh? He hasn't hit on you yet? I don't know. <laughs> oh, maybe he's the one. The, the, the A-lister. Okay, we'll leave it at that. We don't want to get you in trouble. Uh, what? Who was the coolest person on the, the 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 cast of the Hills? You know what's so interesting? I have um my friends know this too. I have a very good radar for bullshit and assholes, like almost a really deep dark detector that goes off when I meet people. And when I met the the whole cast at Thanksgiving, my detector was blown, and I was like, 
either they're all shitty or my thing is off. Like my reader might be off. And I didn't know if it was because they were being filmed. So it wasn't a real environment, but um, I couldn't tell who was shitty. So, but I really thought um, Heidi and Spencer were warm mm -hmm. and they were interesting people and they seemed, they seemed authentic. So I probably Heidi seemed the nicest. That's they cool. were they're I think they're really fun because they're genuine. They they own yeah. they're crazy. Mm -hmm. Um we had Audrina on the other day. She was wonderful. She was like she's great. Really like she blew away my expectations. Very grounded. That's great. Yeah, she seems like nice. Well, oh, she seems very nice too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the best perk of being famous. <laughs> the best perk of being famous. Oh, just getting paid to go out for sure. Cause I love, I love a good time. So I'm actually going to um, an appearance today. So I love getting paid to go do things that I probably would have done for free anyway. Nice. That's the best. Okay. Well, what's the, this is my last question. What's the worst side of being famous? The worst side, uh, definitely just the consistent abuse. The people on the internet these days are fucking nuts and, um, and they are ruthless and, you know, I always think it must have been so fun to be a celebrity like 50 years ago. Because what were people going to do? Mail you some hate mail or something? Like, it is just so consistent, psychotic, and fucked up these days that that's definitely the downfall. I mean, if I would have known, I, I don't know. I just, I find it interesting. I'm not even sure why. When we grew up, I think when people our age were younger, we saw celebrities and that lifestyle seemed very nice. But I imagine being a child or, you know, a young person now seeing the life of a celebrity. I'm not sure if it would look as beautiful because it is just so much abuse. And I don't remember that for all of the stars that I had when I was younger. Yeah, okay, because stars back in the day, well, uh, fans in the back in the day or haters back in the day, they didn't have access to the celebs with social media and being able to put a, a trolley comment online and the person able to actually read it. So yeah. And trolley that. trends, like they'll, you know, they'll try to make trending topics on Twitter. It's definitely shitty. So <laughs> we, we do a thing called fan question roulette here on the podcast. And basically what it is, is our fans of the, the podcast will record themselves asking a question. They don't know what celebrity is coming on the podcast. Okay. So they just submit a question. We don't even get to see it. Our producer puts it in the role and we just play one. Are you down to answer some questions? I'm down. Let's go. All right. So the first one comes from Shannon. Pat, can you play it? Hi, my name is Shannon and this is three. And we are wondering what would be your weapon of choice in a zombie apocalypse? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. God, I probably like a grenade. Like I just want, I would just need a big, a big well, that's thing. A one time shot. You can't do that. You need a weapon that will last more than once in an apocalypse. I have a feeling I would give up pretty quickly, to be honest with you. Like, if we're in a zombie apocalypse, I saw this on Twitter recently. Like, what the fuck are we trying to stay alive for? Are, are we like, fuck I'm with you. Why do you want to be here? So use the grenade on yourself and be done with it then. I just have a feeling I would be over it quick. Okay. We got a, we got one more question from, Ke is it Keely? Keely? I'm going with Keely. Okay. Hi, I'm Keely from Houston, Texas. As a female middle school student and athlete, what advice do you have to give me so I can make the greatest impact on my community and future? Oh my God, so cute. <laughs> wow. We got little little listeners. Uh-oh. So cute. We've been cussing this whole podcast. We got little so listeners. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about, yeah. Well, for young Keely, I would say um, you have to trust your gut and not listen to um, naysayers at all because they will be filled your life will be filled with people who tell you that you can't do something or that they don't see it and only you know what you're capable of so that's what i would say nice sound advice yes and keely i don't know if you should be listening to our podcast yeah right i'm we're talking about <laughs> play yeah. and we've been talking about all kinds of shit today yeah, that too. But also, yeah, you, can be, you can be a lady and talk about um, things when you're a full-grown adult woman because it isn't messed up. And if boys can rap about girls and boys can rap about adult things, then adult women should be allowed to do the same things. So don't feel yeah. too bad. Preach it. Preach it. Yeah. yeah. She's going to know what's well, up. Lindsay, I got to say, you know, I, I've been following your content for a long time on Instagram, and now it's like 
fun to have you on this podcast because in some ways I feel like it's just cool to get to know you, the person. And uh, you definitely, and we always like to say in this podcast, we like to humanize Hollywood and reveal a fourth wall. And you did that today. And you're just, a, I, I think you're a very cool person. You're fun. And uh, I, I wish you nothing the best. I know you're doing a lot of acting roles right now, but I think you're going to continue to do well. You got a good attitude and you got a good head on your shoulders. I'm excited to see what you do next. It's, uh, it's really great talking to you. Thank you so much. No, thank you for having me. It is much appreciated. Humanizing Hollywood. I love, I love that term. You're killing it. Thank you very much. Yeah, Lindsay, I make sure you follow on IG. Yeah, yeah your, quest, Lindsay, you us. Uh, your quest up the mountain keeps going, even though you may be at the top. I'm telling you. I, I no. You're, you're crushing it. No. You're crushing it right now. You know I'm tap dancing on Broadway. Like, no. I <laughs> do. When I tap dance on Broadway, we made it. But okay, Tiffany so might be close. There, I, and I'm going to hold you to that because if you're tap dancing on Broadway and you tell me I still haven't made it, I'm going to say, Lindsay, telling you, you appreciate what you got because you're doing I, a fucking fantastic. I promise you I will. If, when I'm at least six, by 60, I will tap dance on Broadway. I have the tap dance shoes downstairs. I love Let's it. go. I love Let's it. do I it. Thank I'm crazy. You. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It was really, uh, uh, like Adam said, it was really fun getting to know you. On a, a on a different level, you know, you see people on Instagram, you see them rocking it out there, but actually getting to talk to them is a whole different ball game. You too. Thank you guys so much for having me. We had a great time. Thanks for watching Hollywood Raw. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you thumbs up to this video, subscribe. That way we can give you endless content from inside Hollywood.